Liquids are a magical phase. Liquids can mix and move like gases do, but their molecules stay close together like those of solids. This leads liquids to have properties that neither solids nor gases have. In this lesson, we will examine three of those properties, viscosity, surface tension, and capillary action. It may come as no surprise to learn that these properties are mediated by intermolecular forces. The viscosity of a liquid is a measure of how fast that liquid flows. Some liquids, like honey or shampoo, have high viscosities and flow slowly. Other liquids, like water or gasoline, have very low viscosities and flow quickly. There are three main factors which affect the viscosity of a liquid the liquid's IMFs, the molecule's shapes, and the liquid's temperature. Liquids with strong intermolecular forces will be strongly attracted to other molecules of that liquid, and they will resist flow. So, high IMFs lead to low viscosity. Similarly, smaller and more spherical molecules will have a lower viscosity than large, long molecules. Imagine pouring out a bowl full of marbles versus pouring out a bowl of spaghetti. The marbles will flow much faster. Lastly, as we increase temperature, the speed of the particles increases, which also decreases viscosity. Before we can discuss capillary action and surface tension, we need to understand two related concepts called cohesion and adhesion. The best way to do this is to observe the shape of a liquid when it is placed in a thin tube. Here we see water and mercury, both in a glass test tube. The water has a concave meniscus in its tube. In other words, the water seems to creep up the sides of the glass. On the other hand, mercury has a convex meniscus. It almost seems like mercury is repelled by the sides of the glass. This is not true because there are no repulsive IMFs, but it does reveal something about the two forces of cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is a measure of how well the molecules stick to themselves. If there are lots of favorable intermolecular forces between the molecules, then they will have a strong cohesive force. On the other hand, adhesion measures how well molecules will stick to a surface. If the molecules and the surface have lots of similar IMFs, then they will have high adhesion. The strength of adhesion will change as the surface changes. For example, water has high adhesion to molecules in most fabrics, which explains why fabric tends to soak up water when it gets wet. Highly hydrophobic surfaces, like this lotus leaf or a freshly stained deck, have weak adhesive forces with water. So water will tend to bead up into a spherical shape to minimize contact with the surface and maximize the amount of water-water interactions. Returning to our glass test tubes with liquid inside, we see that the strong adhesive forces causes a phenomenon called capillary action, where water will rise up into the tube. Water has high adhesive forces with glass because the polar water molecules can form strong dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding interactions with the glass. This also explains the concave meniscus of water in a glass tube. The adhesive forces are stronger than the cohesive forces, so water will go out of its way to stick to the glassy surface. Mercury displays the complete opposite behavior. The only adhesive forces between polar glass and nonpolar mercury atoms are dispersion forces, the weakest of all the IMFs. However, the atoms of mercury form very strong metallic bonds with one another. Because mercury's cohesive forces are stronger than the adhesive forces between mercury and glass, mercury will minimize its contact with the glass surface and maximize its contact with other mercury atoms, forming a convex meniscus. Cohesive forces also explain the final liquid property in this lesson, surface tension. Water molecules are held together by strong intermolecular forces, which cause water to minimize its surface area. These IMFs create what seem to be an elastic skin on the surface of water. 
In order for something to sink into the water, it has to break the cohesive water-water bonds, which increases water's surface area, an unfavorable process. Some insects are able to suspend themselves on water because their weight is not enough to break through water's surface tension. Time for a conceptual practice problem. Do you think that the water strider insects have hydrophobic or hydrophilic legs? Hydrophilic things have strong adhesive forces to water, such as glass or cloth, while hydrophobic things have weak adhesive forces with water, such as oils or waxes. To answer this question, think of the root cause of surface tension. Water has a high surface tension because it would rather bond to itself than to many other substances. Increasing the surface area of water involves breaking the water-water IMFs and forming new water surface IMFs. The weaker the water surface IMFs are, the harder it will be to break water surface tension. Therefore, water striders need hydrophobic legs with weak adhesive forces to water. In fact, their legs are coated with thousands of tiny hydrophobic hairs, which seem to repel the water and keep the bugs afloat.